Hey guys, uh, Lacey and Steve here from Duo Reacts. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and watching our video. Um, we are watching Game of Thrones, season five, episode one. Is that not crazy? Crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, we're already on season five. Yeah, can we watch the show? <laughs> well, I have some questions for you. Yeah, but can we watch the show? We can watch it. Okay, let's do the questions now. <laughs> no, we are doing all this for me to say, no, you know what? Actually, we're not going to watch the show. <laughs> True. Um, True. <laughs> so we have some questions from you guys um, that we either didn't have time for in the last episode or, um, or new questions. So the first question is from Footy Surfer 1981. Footy Surfer. And they want to know, what do you guys think of Tywin's death? Was it what you expected, or did you even think he would die at all? Part one of the question. Uh, <laughs> was it expected? Absolutely not. That's what I thought he asked. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't think he would die. I mean, who would have saw that? Right. I saw Tyrion leaving, didn't expect him to be... Killing his yeah. dad as well. Okay. And, um... And would you, would did it, you even think he would die at all? So did you expect him to die at all? Not this soon. Not when it did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And He's that, a pretty and powerful character to that kick was, off. Yeah, that was going to be my answer to that as well. Um, I expected Tywin to die at some point. I did not expect Tyrion to be the one to kill him. The strong of he was in this whole uh, episodes one through th uh, five, or you know, up to five. Oh yeah, was, seasons. Yeah. Yes, was incredible. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong character to kill off. Yeah, I would agree. And yeah, like I said, I was definitely expecting him to die, but not the way he did, and not by Tyrion's hand. But I figured he would die at some point. Exactly. <laughs> um, next question is from Elizabeth Astorino. Elizabeth. Um, how do you feel about Varys now that he helped Tyrion escape? Do you trust him? Yes. Okay. I trust him. And what do I think about him helping? Um, I think he kind of put himself in that spot uh, when the bells started ringing that, you know, what are you doing down there? He... He knew he'd probably be. Well, it seems like it was kind up. of like this whole plan, though, even well before that. Like I think he no. was originally planning on staying. Oh, staying, yeah. And it was the bells. He knew yeah. that. That's how I felt too. And then, yeah. So you feel like you can trust him? Oh, sure. Okay. Sure, if he's willing to go that far to get you out of there, of course, I think. I mean, so. commit treason and. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because he set himself up pretty good at. King's Landing, to be honest. Why would he... Aligned himself with the right people yeah, at the right times. the game times. well. Yeah. Um, next question is from Christian Gore. Christian Gore. Um, how different would the wall be if Ned Stark had been sent to the wall instead of being beheaded? Do you think he would have become the Lord Commander when they voted? Um, and would it have hindered or helped Jon Snow's personal growth as a character? That's wow. a really good question. Yeah, it is. Made, yeah. Because I, I have literally never thought about that. Like, what if he would have been sent to the wall? How would it have changed the wall? Like, the story that's going on at the wall? And would it, you know, would it have helped or hindered Jon Snow's growth? I feel like it would have hindered. I felt it would have helped. Really? Because I feel like if Ned was there, he would have taken more of a leadership role. And I think that that might have hindered John's development a little bit because I, I'm not sure why exactly. I just feel like it would. I don't feel that way. Okay. I felt Ned's presence when they left at that Y crossing there. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't feel that was going to be the last time he saw Ned. So, right. Uh, that's a great question. They I were think definitely it, close. I think it would have helped his, his development as a fighter. 
okay. uh, over time. Uh, maybe not this rapid, but he would have been a better person because I was one on one with Ned and, and his I, relationship. Yeah, I think that would that would. It would have helped too because of Alistair and how much Alistair hates John, and he probably wouldn't have been able to express that as much if Ned was there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he, you know. I'll tell you, Alistair has hindered John. Oh, so having agree. Ned there, agree. Yeah. I think he, he would have been one of the top candidates to be a leader once sure. uh, something ever happened to Ned. But I think the the story at the wall, uh, they would be a lot stronger. Okay. Absolutely. That's a very good question. Because he's though, such Christian. a leader. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a well, super good question. Well, she would have to the wall. That would have been. I mean, that's great. something for everybody to think about. Like, what would be different? You know, what would be different at the wall if Ned would have been sent there instead of Joffrey beheading him? Um, but thank you for that question, Christian. That's a really good question. Yeah, I wish I could have said Ned would have been at the wall. He'd still be alive. I know, right? Ugh. Um, Dano. Dano. Do you have any ideas as to what Arya might do when she arrives in Bravos? Mm. What do you see for John? And also, what do you see for John's character in season five? Will he become more or less important to the storyline? Lastly, what do you think Tyrion's frame of mind will be if he ever makes it off the ship? Keeping in mind his trauma. Oh, you. That's a lot of questions. So let's start with one. What? Uh, what? What's Arya's plans in Bravos? I have no idea why she's going to Bravos. Other than to develop more of her skills because she's on her own. She realizes that, but she seems like as she was leaving, she embraced that idea that it's me that has to take the next steps. Right. You know, she's she's young, so she's little, and she understands that. And I think seeing two powerful characters battle, she's not ready for that. And is she, she is she smart? Is she you know is she going to develop? Yeah. And but, her dancing master, Cyril Farrell, that's where he was from, was from Bravos. Yeah, so what maybe she's... What does that do? He's dead. Oh, I know that, but I mean, maybe that's why she wants to go there. To train like he was trained, you know, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But, like I said, I think she's going there to develop. Okay. Um, what do you see for John's character? Do you see <clears throat> him becoming more or less... More or less of a storyline there. More, more. Way more. Way, way more. You think that'll just continue to grow pretty much? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and lastly, what about Tyrion? If he ever makes it off the ship, where's his where's his mind going to be at? It's a good question because you're taking away a lot of his power. But he yeah. does have power with one thing. He has one thing that really works is his... Uh, ability to talk but you take out the negotiation that a Lannister always pays his debts <laughs> right. um, where does that leave him good question I don't know well and the fact that he's probably tra like he said probably traumatized by everything that's happened he just murdered two people murdered everyone his hates love the Lannisters. and his father so if they, you know maybe going is he gonna have to stay hidden is he gonna have to hide his identity He's going to have to blend in to an adversary and somehow work his way up. And okay. that's that's what I can only imagine. And he has the perfect person with him uh, to kind of make that journey. But, man, uh, he, like I said, he's knocked down a peg from being a Lannister. Plus, he has a downside of being a Lannister. But killing his father also says a lot as well. If it gets out that he did it. Yeah. That so an adversary is, is my uh, idea. Okay. <laughs> we have the same question that a couple people want to know. Evil Phil. Evil Phil. And Dular. Dular. They both want to know your predictions for Bran this season. What's, what's well, coming up this season for Bran? Obviously, he's in a place that where he needs to be uh, right now. He's at, he's at the tree. He's with the three-eyed raven. Yeah. Um, 
obviously we're going to learn a little bit more of what his powers are maybe um, get some answers to the questions of uh, what what, what his, I mean he has a very powerful ability yeah I mean we seen him just place his hand on a tree and he could see past and present and yes possibly future we don't know well, I'm sure and that combined with the fact that he can warg you know that's a, that's a lot that's a lot that's a lot <laughs> So, we're so find we'll out just find out more about that, and that character that character is going to be built upon as well. Okay. Not as much as Jon Snow. I think Jon Snow is you going to be he'll... forefront. Okay. Okay. Because I like Jon Snow. <laughs> just because you like him. Yep. Hit that subscribe button. And. And. Hit that. Hit that notification bell. To be. Notified if we upload new videos. Say, I'm going to catch you later. I'll catch you later, guys. Hope amazing. Hope amazing happens to you. Today. Today. <laughs> okay. Hi, guys. Say, I just got home from school. I just got home from school. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. And I don't like Mondays. And I don't like Mondays. They're, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so, um, say I'm gonna catch you later. I'm gonna catch you later. Um, watch the video that I was with mommy and daddy. I'm gonna go get a snack. She's a natural. Um, okay, so the next question is from Dan McNeil. Dan McNeil. And this is a question that we kind of talked about in the live stream, but I figured we'd go over it yeah, for sure. anybody that missed the live stream. Yeah. Uh, top three that you don't think are going to make it through this season. You remember what your answers were during the yeah. live stream? I said... Uh, you said Stannis. Yeah, Stannis. Littlefinger. Little fingers, my long shot. And that, I want to see him dead. Right, and I can't remember what your last one was. Yeah. Oh, Alicer. Wasn't it Alicer? That's exactly what it was. That's why I was trying to figure out his name. Yeah. Okay. Alicer Thorn. Little finger. Hope he's hoping little finger. Uh, that's his. Your that's long, my long shot. That's your long shot. And Stannis. Yes. Okay. Um, so there's a good, bad, and who I want. Good, bad, and then who you're like, please. please. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, next question is from D. Wally. D. Wally. Um, rank your top five episodes so far. We did that. Uh, no, but... episodes, not seasons. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, episodes. Um, oh. That's a tough one. Season one. Uh, well, favorite episodes, but yeah. I, I'm gonna just say the, the ones that were gripping. Okay. To me, okay. That to me is always that you can think of off the top. Well, of Well, yeah, head. Ned's death. Okay. Um, hurt, and uh, you found out uh, just how passionate you are about Game of Thrones. Me, Top I, five. Oh. Yeah. Um. Definitely, I know, I definitely. Know several of them were in definitely, season four. I, I, well, no, uh, Danny when she arose from the fire okay. was powerful. So season one, episode ten. Yep. When she rose from the fire. Season four is my absolute favorite, so I could go with every scene. Right. Uh, so. Season one is my second favorite season, and then two, three. Okay. So that's kind of what I'm. Uh, season four. I mean, all the rest I'm going to be season four right now. Probably the uh, the trial. Probably the trial. The uh, the battle. The uh, battle was I a mean, good one. Even though that's a small part of it, uh, let's go with uh, the red. Uh, the red, red wedding. wedding. Yeah, it's like it's and the the purple. And red. The pr yeah, then yeah. the purple. I mean, where do you want to go? Because I can sit here and you're like, I can rank them all day. It's just like I can't. Oh. You can't say for sure like which episode is your absolute favorite because they're all so. But good question. If I yeah. if, if ranking them, uh, you know, season wise, 
is, is four one two three because you four, had, yeah. yeah you had talked about that during the live stream yeah okay. and the, but the season episodes geez I could go with all season four uh, right yeah because some of the acting some of the uh, uh, pretty much the entire season was really gripping well, it was kept you on your seat the whole entire time yeah it sure did yep a good question um Va uh, Valen McNeil <laughs> Okay. Uh, there will be three, count them, three, oh my effing God moments. Can you, Steve, think of anything this show can do to shock you to your very core? Mwahahahaha. Things that shock me or something devastating happened to... So there will be three, Are oh, you talking my, about coming, coming oh up? my effing G moments. That's yeah, I, uh, I, I'm following you. Right, and that's gonna happen. Uh, right. Well, something to happen to Danny would be an oh my f and g. Oh my f and g. Um, something that would happen to Circe okay. would be an oh my f and g. <laughs> okay. And uh, something that would happen to Tyrion. Would be an oh my f and g. Moment. So those would be things that would shock you to your very core. If something yeah, because I believe they're they're to they're here characters. to the oh okay. Yeah. So it because so Tyrion, Cersei, and John. Not John. Did you say John? I did say John, but he would be on my fourth. Oh, I thought you said John. I was going to say John. Cersei. So you're reading my mind. John and Danny. You're reading my mind, aren't you? Apparently, I th I could have swore you said John. Were you warging into my I brain? Was, I was warging. She's warging. So those four characters, if anything happened to them, you'd be like, oh my F and G. <laughs> well, yeah, because they're these are people I uh, predict to go all the way. Right. Okay. They're not in my death pool. Okay. No, they're no. You know what? You had originally you had Cersei in your Deadpool originally. I took her out. Well, she's still in there. Um, Asalas Salas. That's Asalas Salas. Asalas Salas. I I probably said that wrong. Sounds good to me. Asalas Salas. <laughs> what kind of changes do you think Arya will go through with no one protecting her now? I think she's gonna grow as a person. Um, not depending on anyone but herself. So you think her the changes right now, that she'll go through will be positive changes? Let me get this straight. I don't want to say that and then someone misinterpret what I'm saying. She's been on her own the whole time since the death of her father. Okay? So, but she's always had a person to kind of intervene in between. Now so she's, she's on her own. She's been on her own like mentally, but now whether I, or not somebody's been there or not is kind of... Yeah. Okay. I, I understand what so you're saying. So what I'm saying now is I feel that... Now she's really going to be on yeah, her own. Yeah, she's though. king of the world. You know, on the front of the when ship. When you saw her on the front of the ship yeah. in that last episode, did you did you picture that in your head with All Jack? I could think of is... I'm she's king on, of the world. That's the first thing that came to mind. The second thing that came to mind was <laughs> uh, I'm on my own now. I have to really... I have to do this. I, you know, I have plans to kill everybody, but so do you, I got... So you <sighs> think it'll make her stronger that she is by on her own because she'll have to, def, you know, she'll have to... She's forced into things, basically. She knows it. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Um, last question before we watch the episode. Oh! Uh, from Corey Gassaway. Corey Gassaway. Uh, random fun question. Game of Thrones is filled with some gut-wrenching, gut jaw-dropping, and heart-stopping moments such as Ned Stark's beheading and the Red Wedding. But does any moment... And the Purple Wedding. And the Purple Wedding. Agreed. But does any moment on the show even remotely compare to the gut-wrenching pain you must have felt watching Raji Davis... Hit a two-two homer off Araldus Chapman with two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning of Game Seven of the World Series. And has any moment been more joyous 
than watching Chris Bryant feel the slow rolling on his knee, slightly slip, but beautifully yep. fire a throw into the glove of Anthony Rizzo. Rizzo. Got, look at that. To a, goosebumps. You shouldn't be talking to me like that, Corey. <laughs> to end the 108 year drought and bring the Cubbies a World Series. Side note, I was at game four at Wrigley. It was majestic, even though they oh. got crushed in that game. Um, Very well put, Corey, also, the, the Corey. Year before, the year before the Cubs went to the World Series, uh, me and my son went up and watched the last game they played, the Mets, before the Mets went on to, to devour to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, that, was, that was a fun moment to even watch at that moment. You knew walking out of that stadium something special is going to happen the following year. So, um, like even, even in the it. loss, even yeah. in the loss, you got to think. There's a lot of games. So, Corey, um, still have the ticket in my wallet from the NLCS uh, game in Chicago where they were ousted the year before. But to watch that moment, um, we had a packed house here every yeah. night. They played every game um, during the World Series. We was had a, a packed house. we had a train bell, you know the tong tong, you know, the, what the old freight train bells. Yeah, I have the clicker over there or whatever to. Oh ding yeah, or the, the ding yeah. Yeah, the dong or whatever you want to call it. My, yeah, my dad used to paint trains like that was his profession. So he had this that has this big what is it iron or no brass brass this big brass bell mm -hmm. and we would uh every time they would make a a hit not not a hit but a home like a home run or get a, a point score. yeah anytime they would score we'd go out and ring that bell basically yeah, say, ring that bell ring that effing bell go right out on the porch right over here and one son would pick it up, and the other one would dong it, and we'd and, all, and pretty we'd much, all go nuts. Yeah, and then saw our entire neighborhood would know when the, the Cubs town scored. town almost could hear Yeah, I, I bet you could hear it across town, seriously, because it's super loud. But It's a train bell. <laughs> that was a fun, that was a fun uh, couple weeks, though, because... It's absolutely amazing. It's it was, just, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, to watch any uh, Chicago sports teams, you got to understand, great fans, great, you know, maybe not if I you're think, a, I don't opposing think, team, but... I don't think there was a dry eye in our mm. house when they won that game, because we... Well, some of us just sat here and... Like, well, in reflected, shock. Reflected. Like, we were like... And then I called my grandma, and she yeah. was bawling, and... Yeah, that was an amazing day for sure. You can imagine a hundred, yeah, hundred and eight years. And we're taking this probably way too long to yeah, talk about yeah. Thrones, but a hundred and so many years uh, for that, there's been a lot of uh, dead Cub fans waiting yeah. their whole life to watch that moment, and it just never ever happened. And we were lucky enough to all experience it. And Corey, I'm glad you got to experience, even in a yeah, loss. Yeah, even that you that got to go to one of the games. You know. So we saw the game that you were at. Yeah, because we watched every single game that year. Every single game. Every single game. Yep. But, all right, let's stop talking about the Cubs and my uh, second husband, Chris Bryant. Um, oh, I thought that was Jon Snow. Uh, okay, he's my third husband. Okay, what about Drogo? Okay, he's my fourth. See, she just can't stop. <laughs> all right. Um, that's all the questions I have for now. I have just a few more after episode one, but are you about ready to get into watching? Yep. I'm um, ready. All right. Let's do it.
shouldn't be out here alone. Why not? If your father here... He'll never know we're gone. But if he finds out... You don't need to be afraid of my father. watching a new show. <laughs> Does it look like a new show? Yeah. I don't know what these do. You should probably listen to her. Let's go into the creepy shack. With the fire In going. the middle of the woods. Seriously. Cersei? No, but. Did you say him, Queen? Tyrion may be a monster, but at least he killed our father on purpose. You killed him by mistake, with stupidity. You're a man of action, aren't you? When it occurs to you to do something, you do it. Never mind the consequences. I mean, if you're going to hide out, might as well be paradise. <laughs> it seems pretty nice wherever they're at. It's like to stuff your shit through one of those air holes. No, I only know what it's like to pick up your shit and throw it overboard. Don't just... The future is shit. Just like the past. <laughs> Good 
together. Yep. Like, I'll just have another drink here. from King's Landing. No one knows what you look like. No one cares. You're safe. But I'm your squire. Do you even know what a squire is? 
And I turned up to a knight. I'm not a knight. That means you're not a squire. So where would I go? I don't care. I'm not your mother. You told Lord Royce you were going to the fingers. I did. But we're heading west. Yeah. If you wanted to betray us, you already would have. Did you Lord see that they literally rode right by? Brian Weren't they coming up on him though? They were just sitting there and then they just drove by. But they don't know because they're obviously in the carriage. So where are we going? To a land where you trust everyone. To a land so far from here. Even Cersei Lannister can't get her hands on you. Your wounds from the black water seem to have healed. It wasn't my wounds that needed healing. <coughs> what can I do for you? You can forgive me. What could you possibly have done to warrant my forgiveness? I led you into the darkness. I doubt you've ever led anyone anywhere. I tempted you into our unnatural relations. And of course, that was the king. His boar hunt. His wine. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a different person now. I found peace in the light of the seven. Did you catch that? Yep. She had uh Robert Kill. She it had Lance. Lance soul. That spear. Yep. That's the sun spear. The line. There, yep. There. Yep. And that's where the mountains are. What's your name? <laughs> She's like, I'll just hang out here. Me. I'm afraid my brother is keeping the king waiting, <laughs> Oliver. Like she sees this every day. It seems like it. It's not seeming to phase her at all. You think I want that woman married to my brother? If she doesn't marry me, she doesn't go to Hyga, which means she stays in King's Land, which means you're trapped here with Cersei Lannister as your mother by law. Perhaps. 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 You have many admirable qualities. Self-pity is not one of them. Any fool with a bit of luck can find himself born into power. But earning it for yourself, that takes work. Not well suited for work. I think you are. You have your father's instincts for politics. And you have compassion. Compassion? Yes. I killed my lover with my bare hands. I shot my own father with a crossbow. I never said you were perfect. <laughs> what is it you want exactly? Peace. Prosperity. A land where the powerful do not prey on the powerless. Where the castles are made of gingerbread and the moats are filled with blackberry wine. The powerful have always preyed on the powerless. That's how they became powerful in the first place. Perhaps. Perhaps we've grown so used to horror, we assume there's no other way. If you sat on the Iron Throne, would you spread misery throughout the land? I will never sit on the Iron Throne. No, you won't. But you could help another climb those steps and take that seat. The Seven Kingdoms need someone stronger than Tommen, but gentler than Stannis. A monarch who can intimidate the High Lords and inspire the people. A ruler loved by millions with a powerful army and the right family name. Good luck finding him. Who said anything about him? Neris. 
You have a choice, my friend. You can stay here at Illyria's palace and drink yourself to death. Or you can ride with me to Marine, meet Daenerys Targaryen and decide if the world is worth fighting for. Can I drink myself to death on the road said to that Marine? The <clears throat> two places she or he was potentially going was either to Daenerys I'm just sorry. or to Stannis. Like and you were right about the streets of I mean that makes well, sense. I mean that that's where they're potentially headed, but who knows if they'll get there or not. But. The wise masters of Yunkai would be anyone with a chest full of gold can buy an army of unsullied. You're not the mother of unsullied. Mother the mother of dragons. I don't want another child's bones dropped at my feet. No one's seen Drogon in weeks. For all I know, he's found halfway across the world. I can't control the name. A dragon queen with no dragons? It's not a queen. Too happy. Not good. That's that's a bad way to go. I'll be honest with you. I don't want to die. I'm burnt to death. I don't want people to remember me like that, scorched and screaming. But it's better than betraying everything I believe. And what happens to your people? You preserve your dignity and die standing. And they'll sing songs about you. You'd rather burn than kneel, the great hero. I think you're making a terrible mistake. <laughs> the freedom to make my own mistakes was all I ever wanted. Kneel and live. This was my home for many years. I wish you good fortune in the wars to come. We all must choose. Man or woman, young or old, lord or peasant, our choices are the same. We choose light. She always have to give a speech before. Yes. <laughs> We choose the true God or the false. Like, I'm sorry, but I could not just stand there and watch somebody burn to death. Like, there's no way. Well, you're right.
<laughs> I mean, that's better than burning to death. That's uh, that he should have done that. That's good. Showed him mercy by doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Except that uh, Stannis' wife, whatever her name is. Yeah, Celise. Yeah, that one. Yeah, and she, she, she had, had a like, smile. Yeah, she had a smirk. slight, slight smile on her like face. A devious smile. Like. Yeah, I think it's like because she's all into this Lord of Light. Like, oh, they're being saved. You know what yeah, I mean? Well, she'll be the next I, one up there burning alive. I think she's uh, a little crazy. Okay, a couple questions for you. Okay. Uh, first question is from Craig Kostelecki. Craig! Uh, we see a flashback from Cersei's childhood. Yeah. Where it was accurately predicted that she would bear only three children who will all wear golden crowns. Meaning they're all blonde. But she also predicted they would also all wear golden shrouds indicating their deaths. We have seen Joffrey die already, but her two other children remain. Do you think the prediction will come true? If so, how do you think Marcella and Tommen will die? So do you think that which is I see into your future thing, do you think that was true? Yeah. So you think that Marcella and Tommen will die? Yep. Okay. How do you think they'll die? Well, I definitely wouldn't have predicted Joffrey dying from the way he did, so I, I really don't know. Okay. I really don't. And she also said that you will be queen for a while. Until someone... Until a more beautiful, younger queen will take... will replace you and take everything you hold dear. So that's also what, another thing that she said. Yeah. Um, okay. From Dano. Hmm. Why do you think Varys testified against Tyrion during his trial, but then saves him, takes him to Pentos, and, ask, and asks him to come with him to Marine to meet Daenerys? For my part, I couldn't quite figure it out. So, why do you think he testified against him, but then ended up saving him? Well, I, I realize he testified against him. Um, and I can't remember quite the words he used, so that's what I was trying to think of. I'm not confused by the question. But I think whatever he did say, it was the truth. Like It was the truth. Yeah. yeah. But then he said something like, maybe marrying <clears throat> Sansa Stark had made him more to the, you know, see more of the northern side or something like that. I can't remember what it... But... He testified against him. I mean, my thoughts on that are kind of like, well, he probably had to, right? Like he. Well, that's sick. What I'm thinking, yeah, he had to. He had to, otherwise. Pardon me. Excuse me. Um. He had to show that he was on their the crown, Tywin and Cersei's side the entire time. He could not. Mm -hmm. He there's no way he couldn't could have not testified against him. Well, that's for sure. Second part of it, I totally get what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Because it, made, it just made sense to me that he would go to a de facto, um, other than King's Landing, he would have to go to Stannis or... Or Daenerys. Da or Daenerys. Yeah. So they're going to Daenerys because, obviously... Varys. He, he, he made, Varys made the point... You know, just like I thought it would be, he has something that a lot of people don't have the ability to be more powerful than what he is, whether he's Lannister or not. And I, I see that as well. I just think it's going to be hard for him uh, to prove it to Daenerys until she has all the facts uh, about okay. him. Okay. So, um, okay. Um, and... Z12129. Z. What are your thoughts on the witch's prophecy? So that's his first question. And then also, where are Littlefinger and Sansa going? And did you suspect that Cersei 
might have had something to do with Robert's death? So it's kind of three questions. Well, yes, on the Robert's death. You figured she could ha- could have had, and this episode kind of yes. confirmed oh, yeah. that it was her that... Absolutely. Okay. Where are Littlefinger and Sansa going? Not a clue. Okay. I figured the Vale was the safest place, and, and now he's taking her, her, yeah. her somewhere safer. Is he taking her to uh, the same place Tywin's going? Or Tyrion's going? I don't know. I mean, I, you don't it's know. That's a crapshoot. Yeah, that's, that's what I'll say. And what did you? What do you think about the witch's prophecy? I mean, we did kind of just talk about that a little bit, um, and that you, how you said you think it will come true. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. Yeah, the the witch is, yeah. I think think there's something to it. Yeah, definitely now. Okay. Wouldn't have said that before, but I'm leaning more towards that every time. Okay. Um, And Corey also says, uh, for the first time in this show, we get a flashback. Maggie the witch tells young Cersei that she will one day become queen but that a younger, more beautiful queen will eventually take her place. What do you think Cersei makes of this prophecy? Do you think that this has been her driving fear uh, and distrust of Marjorie this whole time? Absolutely. But I don't think it's Marjorie that's necessarily the... And that's what the next part of the question is, actually, is also do you think she might be overlooking other possibilities of yes. the, who the younger queen is? She's trying to change the prophecy right now because she remembers so, it so well. She's trying to change the future and make it happen the way she wants it to, when in reality, she's it's not necessarily what now is going on. It's what's coming. And so you think that's why she hates Marjorie, probably, because... Yeah, but I don't think that's her... But you think she needs to be more scared of Danny? Yep. Is that who you're talking that's about? That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, okay. <clears throat> that's what I would have figured. Um, can't, it can't be that simple that it's Marjorie. Right. Okay. It's Danny. It's got to be. Okay. Um, okay, so knowing now, after watching so many oh. play the Game of Thrones, the Lannisters, Littlefinger, now Sansa, and so on, what do you think uh, Cersei's next move is, considering she hates the idea of Loras Tyrell and their expected union, and she hates Marjorie, and now Lancel has come back with some, with some dirt in his potato sack? So this is from Elizabeth. She just wants to know what's... What's in store for Cersei? What's her next move? Her dad's dead. <clears throat> well, the whole game's open now. Okay. Says your young son doesn't know what the heck he's doing. He, yeah, he really does. It's going to be his major counsel other than Marjorie. Marjorie's a threat. So she... Cersei's role is to be a mom okay. and make all the decisions because the kid's too young. I mean, she, she, she was making decisions or trying to when Joffrey, the bastard son. So uh, you think she's going to step up into that, like, ruler? Like, she's going to yeah. be like Tywin, basically. We'll run the ship, yeah. Okay. Uh, from Ebony, where do you, Ebony. Where do you see... <coughs> excuse me. Where do you see... Tyrion's journey taking him now that he's heading to Marine. Is it a smart move? Uh, also, what do you see for the future of the Lannisters now that the family is shrinking? So, Tyrion, is it a smart move to go to Danny? Or do you think Danny yes. will just behead him? Or Yes, and I think he's going to face that. Okay, so you think it's a smart move for him to get to Danny, but... And he knows that he's, he's, taking he's got chance. some stuff to prove, basically. Well, he just said he would. Can I drink my way all the way there? Because this is going to suck. Uh, so right. he knows that that's coming. Yeah. The second part of the question, what? You know um, the yeah. Also... I was going to mention, and then I forgot. What's the future of the Lannisters now Now that the family is shrinking? So well, Tyrion's it's, gone. That's, that's another, good, dead. another good question. But I, I kind of I, I said... The family would um, 
implode on each other, and that's what it has done. Okay. And will it continue to do that, do you think? Well, you just took... Two of the two, biggest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you got Jamie there. Yeah. He isn't in total agreement with Cersei, so there's still that... We'll have to see. Okay. With them, too. Uh, the next question is from Akram Lacamora. Akram. What characters do you think will play the biggest roles in this season? And I think you kind of answered that earlier. Yeah. Jon Snow, I think, was your main one. And then I think you thought Bran would. Oh, well, Tyrion, too. Tyrion. Cersei. Yes. Okay. Um, Holden Ketron wants to know. Holden. Um... Do you think Mance Raider deserved to die? And he's so he's asking both of us this. So yes. You think he deserved yes, to die? Yes, he died. Okay. Yeah. He died honorably. He wasn't going to bend the knee. He, obviously, because he had a point. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to bend the knee. You know, and, and send my guys, you know, bloodshed for, you know. He stood by what he stood for and he had a good reason for it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would just say, like, I don't think he deserved to die. Um, but he, when you're dealing with Stannis, and Stannis is very straight and narrow, he's like, he's like, he does things by the book. It's pretty obvious what he chopped his like. right hand man's, you know. Finger. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, off. in that sense, like, when all, like, I get why he, why he chose to not bend the knee. I get that 100% because those were his principles, you know. So, but that's all the questions I have for this episode. We got dragon, dragon drama. We got dragon drama. Dragon drama. Dragon drama, you Drama, guys. dragon. Dragon drama. Drama, dragon. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's our cue to go ahead and end this episode. Drama. <laughs> You guys, leave your likes on this video. Leave your comments and questions below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Hope amazing happens to you. Peace out.